Humanity has been conducting war for thousands of years. We've seen some pretty decisive battles within the 20th century, like the Battle of Midway, the Battle of Stalingrad, and the Tet Offensive. But there are some battles much older that help to shape the course of civilizations and human history. Join me for today's video as we take a look at 15 of the largest ancient battles. Number 15. Battle of Gaugamela the year is 331 BCE, and the Hellenic League and Achaemenid Empire are at each other's throats. Alexander the Great is fighting hard against the Persian Empire's Darius III and Telgomel, just outside of Mosul, or what is present-day Iraq, with an army nearly twice the size of the Greeks. But if there's anything we know about Alexander the Great, this young leader was one of the greatest military minds of all time, and many of his tactics are still employed by police forces, militaries, and private security teams globally. So despite his weak numbers, the Greek tactics were able to win the Battle of Gaugamela. But the Greek and Persian leaders had met in battle only once before. But this would be the last time they'd ever see each other on the battlefield. Because not only was the Hellenic League's victory over Darius III so decisive, but it led to the complete collapse of the Achaemenid Empire as they would know it. Historians and researchers will tell you that the Persian army failed to assault Alexander's army before the battle itself leaving their supply lines as they moved through Mesopotamia and allowing them to cross through the Tigris River in the hopes that he would meet the Achaemenid Emperor on the battlefield of his choice. Too bad for him that it didn't work out so well in the end. How's that, PP Monster? Number 14. Battle of Salamis the Battle of Salamis took place in the year 480 BCE and was hard fought by the Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire along the Straits of Salamis in Greece. The Greek city-states had been at war with the Persian Empire for years, and it would all reach ahead here as they had the home field advantage. While the Persians had greatly outnumbered the Greek armies, the Greeks quite literally knew the lay of the land within their narrow stone streets, and coupled with their superior tactics, they were able to outmaneuver the enemy relatively quickly. The Greek forces blocked the entrance to the Thermopylae Pass, while their larger forces fought in the Straits of Artemisium, which is another battle on its own that may just pop up on this list, meaning the Greeks fought two battles in one day. The Battle of Salamis was so bad for the Persians that King Xerxes was forced to take his ball and go home with what little remained of his armies and let his general Mardonius take charge of the battle. But this battle is also one of the first ever naval battles to have ever been recorded in human history. And so we know that the Persians lost 300 ships compared to the Greeks' loss of just 40. Number 13. The Battle of Gaisha The Battle of Gaisha took place in December in the year 202 BCE and saw the Han and Western Chu dynasties of ancient China go at it during one of the bloodiest campaigns the pre-unified nation has ever seen. The Han Dynasty was led by Lu Bang, and the Western Chu saw Zhang Yu take the helm as he was outnumbered by the former about six to one as both sides sought to conquer the many states that made up the region. Zhang Yu was already walking into this battle after suffering a defeat outside of the Chu capital, but he had hoped that his tactics would be able to overcome the incredible odds that lay before him as they had in the past. But his center battalion quickly fell and was forced to retreat from the veteran army before them, and the remaining army was attacked from the sides and suffered from a double envelopment. With his army pinned in place and beginning to waver, he was set up for defeat, and the Han army finished the job. So in the end, it was not only numbers but his superior tactics that won the day, despite Chu's best laid plans. In the end, Zhang Yu chose to fall by his own hand rather than risk capture by the enemy, and so as the Battle of Gaisha came to a close, he chose to take his own life. Number 12. The Third Servile War I am Spartacus. The iconic line uttered in Stanley Kubrick's film of the same name may be a cultural meme, but its roots can be pulled straight from history. And if that scene isn't enough to bring even the strongest of us to tears, then perhaps the real story will. The Third Servile War broke out in the year 71 BCE and lasted for the next two years in the Roman Republic. But unlike so many other battles that were fought between two great and powerful armies, the Third Servile War was a series of slave-led rebellions that had enough with their Roman oppressors. The slaves were led by many, but Spartacus is the name that will go down in history as the most famous commander. Spartacus led what began as a group of just 78 slaved and escaped gladiators, but increased to a legion of 120,000 stalwart men, women, and children. 
The Roman Republic took these rebellions pretty seriously and met them with a total of eight legions under the leadership of Marcus Licinius Crassus. Spartacus and his legion of would-be free folk fought hard against their oppressors, but sadly in the end the rebellion was squashed by the Romans. There's no denying that the spirit and message of Spartacus and the brave men and women who said, no more, lives on today. Number 11. The Battle of Metaurus You know a battle is epic when war elephants enter the fray, and that's exactly what happened at the Battle of Metaurus. The Battle of Metaurus took place along the Metaurus River in what is modern-day Italy between the Roman Republic and Carthage in the year 207 BCE. The Roman army led by the notorious Emperor Nero came to the battlefield with 7,000 soldiers at the front and another 7,000 reinforcements. But Carthage's Hasdrubal Barca, along with a whopping 30,000 soldiers, the vast majority of them infantry, and five of his epic war elephants. But despite the discrepancy in numbers, the winner's outcome may surprise you. The Battle of Metaurus was one of the most important battles during the Second Punic War, but sadly for Carthage, much of their quality equipment was seized by Hasdrubal's brother, Hannibal. So not only was his army poorly equipped, more Roman generals came to Nero's aid along with their fighters to turn the tide of the battle. Hasdrubal was caught completely off guard, and in the end, he quite literally lost his head. Number 10. The Siege of Syracuse It should no longer come as a surprise that the Roman Empire was part of many of the greatest battles in ancient history, and the Siege of Syracuse is no different. The year is 214 BCE, and the major players are, of course, Rome and Carthage. And unlike some other battles we've seen thus far, both sides were even in terms of numbers. The Siege of Syracuse is also part of the Second Punic War and lasted for a full two years before a winner was declared, and you can probably guess who it was. Sicily at the time was divided by two warring rulers, and while Rome controlled the west and the north, the Greek tyrant Hiero controlled the east. But when Hiero died, his grandson took over, and he didn't fare too well. He was assassinated and his realm of Syracuse was now under the jurisdiction of Rome's enemies, the Carthaginians, and thus the fighting began. Brother fought brother until Rome stepped in, killing Carthaginians left and right and beheading their prisoners. Thus the siege of Syracuse began. The city was protected by weapons invented by the great inventor Polymath Archimedes. And so the battle was very hard fought, but in true Roman fashion, they won. Syracuse was taken, and Archimedes was murdered by a common Roman soldier. Number 9. Battle of Kadesh The oldest ever recorded military battle in history is the Battle of Kadesh, which took place in the year 1274 BCE between the New Kingdom of Egypt and the Hittite Empire. And while this battle is as ancient as it gets, what's really cool is that there's also a record of the tactics used. The Battle of Kadesh took place in what is modern-day Syria with the Egyptian armies led by the famous Ramses II. It all began when Ramses II chose to expand his territory at the advice of his father, and so he made for the city of Kadesh and engaged in some good old-fashioned chariot warfare, sending 5,000 of these horse-drawn units into the fore. Ramses' forces were able to capture two Hittites and tortured them into giving away the exact location of the Hittite army, which was on its way to aid Kadesh. But in true loyalist fashion, the spies lied, allowing the Hittite army with its 40,000 foot soldiers and 3,000 chariots to hit Ramses' vanguard hard and unexpectedly, which was especially easy because the Egyptian leader had pushed ahead from the rest of his army. Luckily for him, though, he survived the assault, launching a counterattack with his superior, lighter, and more maneuverable chariots. Both sides took heavy losses, and the entire campaign ended in the signing of a non-aggression pact. Number 8. Battle of the Catalonian Plains The Battle of the Catalonian Plains is known for how bloody it was, and that should come as no surprise because it was fought in the year 451 AD between Attila the Hun and a mix of Romans and Visigoths. The Huns had run through the region relatively unchecked, pillaging and taking very few prisoners all along the way, and so the Romans and the Visigoths teamed up and took it upon themselves to say no and found an opportunity to stop Attila from completely decimating and looting Gaul. It was a tough battle and one of the last major military operations conducted by the Western Roman Empire. 
Who exactly won the battle is still up for debate, but it was enough to help the Roman Visigoth Salatians succeed in their efforts despite their casualties. But the Battle of the Catalonian Plains had a pretty intense prelude. Before it even began, Attila the Hun had his Hun diviners examine the entrails of human sacrifices that morning to predict how he would fare in the end. They said although the Huns were set to lose, their enemies would suffer the loss of one of their greatest leaders, and that information was enough for him to push forth. On the second day of the battle, it's said that bodies piled up so high on the battlefield that it was near impossible for the Huns to progress any further, which allowed the Romans and Visigoths to get together and decide their next move, which was siege the Attila's camp, which was now low on provisions and under constant shower of arrows, and many historians say that in the end, the Huns were allowed to retreat. Number 7. The Battle of Changping before its unification, China was divided into two states, many of which were at constant war with the other. The two warring states of Qin and Zhao were at odds for years, and the Battle of Chen Ping was one of their biggest. After years of a bloody back and forth in the year 262 BCE, Qin attempted to invade the state of Zhao, but the Zhao retaliated with a 400,000 strong force and attempted to storm the Qin camp. Too bad that's exactly what the state of Qin wanted, and they ambushed the army in the mountains before they could reach their camp. The battle was intense and lasted for about 46 days, but because of the battle raging in the mountains, Qin's supply line was completely cut off, and so not only were they losing on the battlefield, but they were losing in the camp as well as food and water rations, as well as equipment and weaponry were all running low. All of those factors were enough for the state of Zhao to earn an incredibly decisive victory over their attackers and bitter enemies, despite having been outnumbered by well over 100,000 men. Number 6. The Battle of Hydespes The Battle of Hydespes took place in the year 326 BCE between the Macedonians and the Hindu Porava Kingdom and saw Alexander the Great and King Porus go head to head. Taking place in Punjab in ancient India near the Hydespes River, many historians will agree that this battle was one of the costliest for Alexander the Great, despite his victory. As you can probably expect, the Battle of Hydespes was brought on by Alexander's desire to expand his empire, but like so many important battles in history, timing is everything, and unfortunately for the Macedonians, they crossed the Hydespes River during a monsoon. But unbeknownst to the Punjabi army, Alexander used the monsoon to his advantage because it caused the river to swell enough that his armies could better cross it and he could catch the flank of King Porus's army. King Porus's army was so ferocious and fought so hard against the Greek tactics that King Porus was named a viceroy to Alexander and was given dominion over the land in the southeast. But the Battle of Hydaspes holds great significance because it opened up a cultural and political influence between the Greeks and ancient India that would last for centuries. Number 5. Battle of Red Cliffs The warlords of the southern states of ancient China, Zhao Yu, Cheng Pu, and Liu Bei were already at each other's throats for control. But things got even hairier as their individual forces advanced north, knocking on the door of Cao Cao, one of the northern warlords. So on 208 AD, it all reached ahead at the Battle of the Red Cliffs. But Cao Cao wasn't just fighting to maintain his control over the northern states. He was one of the many ancient Chinese leaders who wanted to put an end to statehood and unify the country. So the Northmen assembled an absurd 800,000 men and attacked his southern enemies with a vengeance. The southern lords only had about 50,000 men among them, with 30,000 of them being fully trained naval soldiers, which gave the south a key advantage. And along with Kakao's lack of stable supplies coming up from the rear, they actually had a fighting chance. So much that Liu Bei was able to come out on top. In the end, Cao Cao's inexperienced navy is what cost him not only the Battle of the Red Cliffs, but also the chance to rule over a unified country. Number 4. Battle of Thermopylae in the summer of 480 BCE, King Leonidas led a small force of just 300 Greeks against the 7,000-man Persian armies coming along the thin coastal Thermopylae Pass. For the next seven days, the Greek Spartans fought back anywhere from 100 to 150,000 Persian soldiers in what would become known as the Battle of Thermopylae. 
It was an important battle for either side to win, because the only thing between the Persian Empire and Greece was that thin pass that was now filled to the brim with soldiers, iron, and steel clashing, and eventually many bodies of the fallen. Needless to say, this was the Greeks' last stand, and everything was at stake for them. However, in the end, while it seemed the Greeks were able to stand up to the insurmountable odds that lay before them, it's said that it was a Greek sheep herder who betrayed the Spartans when they told the Persians of a secret entrance through the Thermopylae Pass, and resulted in the death of not only Leonidas, but his army of just 300 Spartans. The Thermopylae Pass is still there today, and anyone with a car can drive along the road that cuts right through it. Number 3. The Battle of Cannae One of the most well-known battles of the ancient Punic Wars, the Battle of Cannae, took place in the year 216 BCE between the Roman Republic and the Allied soldiers of Carthage. And while the first battle itself was as massive as it was bloody, that's what makes it so famous, it is one of the first recorded accounts of the good generals and leadership overcoming sheer numbers, and to this day is regarded as one of the best tactical victories of all time. And despite their winning track record, it was King Hannibal of Carthage who was able to win the day over the Romans. The Romans had Carthage outnumbered by about 10,000 men, but Hannibal was able to overcome the numbers by placing his light Gallic infantry in the center and in front of the heavy infantrymen. When the battle-hardened professional soldiers of Rome made their way through the ranks, the Gallics quickly dispersed and gave way to the heavy infantry behind them. And while the armies of Rome continued to push, betting on their numbers, they quickly found themselves surrounded by the Carthage army and totally flanked. The mobile Carthaginian cavalry came up from the rear blocking the Romans' retreat, and the rest, as they say, is history. Number 2. The Battle of Kalinga the year is 261 BCE, and the Battle of Kalinga rages on between the Mauryan Empire and the feudal Republic of Kalinga, with both sides making up what is now much of present-day India. This war was all about power, and as rulers came and went and power shifted, the Emperor Ashoka of the Maurya Empire looked to increase his reach and bring his rule over the people of Kalinga. Needless to say, the free people of Kalinga weren't too happy about that, it's said that the Mauryan army consisted of well over 100,000 soldiers, while the Kalinga forces were made of about 60,000 soldiers, 700 elephants, and countless armed civilians. The battle was so bloody and so bad that both sides suffered so many casualties that historians say it was Emperor Ashoka himself who called up the fighting. Feeling responsible for the losses both empires had incurred as he paraded through the battlefield, in the end, Ashoka felt so bad that he changed his entire religion and converted to Buddhism to not only atone for what he had caused, but to make sure something on that scale never happened again under his rule. Number 1. Battle of Plataea Another massive battle during the war between the Greek city-states and the Persian Empire is the Battle of Plataea, which, according to the victorious Greeks, involved over 400,000 men. Many historians believe that while that number is vastly exaggerated, the Battle of Plataea still probably saw 200,000 men do battle, which is still staggering considering the Greek city-states were ununified and all had their own agenda. The Battle of Plataea began when the Persians were on the run and retreated into the town of the battle's namesake in an attempt to counter the Greek forces coming from the Peloponnese. The battle lasted for 11 days, with neither side gaining any ground, until eventually the Persians broke through the hoplites' right flank, destroyed their supplies, and followed up that with a fully frontal cavalry assault. The plan had worked for a time, but many of the Greek hoplites being forced to break away from the main body and dispersing their force. The Persian generals became too greedy when they sent their left flank across the river to finish off a group of hoplites as they retreated, and the Spartans and Tegeans took the opportunity for a counterattack, surrounding the Persians on all sides. The hoplites were clad in heavy bronze armor, which was typically able to stave off the Persian arrows, and because the Persian army was made of mostly light infantrymen, the day went to the sturdy Greeks. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.